Hello and welcome, one and all. I am Old School Gamer 1971. A special shout out to Moomin and Pro Predator 49XX. Hope you're all having a great day and are staying safe. Today's subject matter is Old School Opinion, April 2021. Another lost episode. Before we begin, if you enjoy the video, give it a big thumbs up, like, and if it pleases you, check out my channel and subscribe. So without further ado, This month I have 5 games to show and 1 brand spanking new platinum. So close to that farm together platinum as well. So we start off with Daydreamer Awakened Edition. It's a Metrovania game developed by Roland Studios that released for the PlayStation 4 in 2016. This is a surprisingly good platform adventure. Yes it is another Metrovania type game. But its looks take me back to the Amiga and ST days. It does play well and certainly when it is on sale it is a bargain. And retro gamers looking for something new to play could do a lot worse than purchase this one. Sometimes I want something that is AAA and sometimes I want something just like this. Alpha Set by POWGI. It's a puzzle game developed by Lightwood Games that came to the PlayStation 4 in 2020. I know it's yet another word game from POWGI, but this one is a word fit with a difference. Down the right hand side of the screen is the letters A through Z. You must fit them in to make words. Sounds easy, and to a degree it is, but then it starts getting harder. And yes, you probably could look them up online, but where would the fun be in that? Sometimes it is just cool to kick back with a beer, listen to the kinks and play a game like this. Chasm is a platform adventure developed by Discord Games that came to the PlayStation 4 in 2018. Again, another game based on a classic, but with a few whistles and bells on it. Chasm is a platform adventure game that borrows from Metroid, Castlevania and Ghosts and Goblins. This is one fantastic mixture and certainly you can find yourself losing time whilst playing the game. Pixel art is not for everyone, but if you can get beyond it, there is hours of fun to be had with this gem. Dead Nation Apocalypse Edition It's an arcade shooter developed by Housemark that came to the PlayStation 4 in 2014. This is a twin stick shooter from Housemark. It is a pity that this game never got a sequel. Playable both online and couch co-op. This is one tough game and once it gets started, it never lets up. With some fantastic weapons, worldwide online rankings and never ending mode, anyone that likes destroying wave after wave of the undead should get this game. Great in single player better in two player. Edna and Harvey Harvey's New Eyes is a point and click adventure developed by Daedalic Entertainment that released for the PlayStation 4 in 2019. This is a point and click adventure filled with point and click adventure goodness. Its graphics remind me of those old Nickelodeon shows. The game has a sense of humour and is the sequel to Edna and Harvey Break Out another well received game. It's good to see the genre isn't dead, especially when the quality of the game is this good. Certainly one for the fans, so here is me hoping to see Breakout in a sale. And the brand spanking new Platinum, Alien Destroyer. It's a first person shooter developed by Random Spin Games that came to the PlayStation 4 in 2021. I know, I know, I know. Yes, this is one of my Troho games. Basically a platinum in around 10 minutes for under a pound. But I will point out that this one is not such a bad game. A little basic, but with it having an online leaderboard, 
There is a reason for you to come back if this is your thing. This does remind me of those old sci-fi shooters from yesteryear. Anyway, a cheap and easy platinum, just like me. So let's start with Sonet finally having formally announced PSVR 2 and the controllers look great. To me, one of the things that Sony did not get right for the original PlayStation VR was using the Move controllers. They certainly have addressed that with the controllers they have shown recently. This will allow even more immersion into the game. Now do us a favour and make the system wireless and then just take my money. Next up we have Returnal for the PlayStation 5 has gone gold. Now I know normally I would not mention this, but with the whole hoo-ha about games being delayed until next year, which I kind of agree with by the way, it's nice to see that after the short delay earlier this year that the game is on target for its release on April 30th. Now do us a favour and formally announce the purchase of Housemark and Bluepoint. Come on, they deserve it. And finally we have Play at Home. Play at Home continues this month with both PlayStation 4 and PSVR titles. Abzu, Enter the Gungeon, Res Infinite, Subnautica, The Witness, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Moss, Thumper and Paper Beast. And being the Play at Home initiative, a response to the COVID, these games are free for everyone. You don't even need to be subscribed to PlayStation Plus to claim these games right now. So download them and enjoy. Thanks Sony, because I do know that they're supposed to be continuing this initiative going forward. Are we about to get better backwards compatibility? A patent says yes, and maybe we will soon be able to purchase PlayStation 3, 2 and original PlayStation games through PlayStation Now. So earlier this week, a patent was found about an easy way to put trophies onto games that doesn't have trophies. This is newsworthy as I cannot think of any games without trophies for the PlayStation 4. So why would they be doing this now? Unless maybe they're about to make PlayStation Legacy games on disc backwards compatible. There is also the fact that some games on PlayStation now have prices. You cannot purchase them yet. It takes you to the PlayStation now purchase screen. But maybe at some point we can purchase those classics we so very well need. Resistance, GTA 4, Red Dead Redemption. Come on, we need this. Also around the campfire this month, with Aliens Fireteam recently announced, adding Evil Dead, Outriders, Hood Outlaws and Legends, and Back for Blood, all coming out this year, with Destiny 2, Dead by Daylight, and Apex Legends to name but a few already out. Is this genre about to become saturated, when games such as Predator Hunting Grounds, Avengers and Anthem have all been trailing behind? Now do not get me wrong, this is not necessarily my scene. I have dabbled with Destiny 2 and Dead by Daylight, but I will admit that Aliens, Evil Dead, Outriders, Hood and Back for Blood do all interest me. So is this to be the generation where I join the online multiplayer generation? Probably not, but I will get all of those games eventually. Three, three later, when you're done here, I think I found something in the flower beds over there. Until then, see ya! So how goes the hunt with you, Trojos? So, as I have admitted recently, I am addicted to farm together, and I am just a couple of trophies away from that platinum. Here is the footage of my getting the platinum for Alien Destroyer. Good, innit? So anyway, let's have a look at that trophy count for this month. Level 476 with a total of 9,547 trophies. That's 111 platinum, 691 gold, 1,748 silver, 
and 6,997 bronze. Post your trophy count down below. Happy hunting, trohos! And it is done. If you found this video interesting or have any suggestions, please comment down below. It will put a big old smile on this old face. Let's get the conversation started. I will answer you all. I post new content every week. Have a great day one and all, and thank you for your support. This has been Old School Gamer 1971, signing off.